Hello, and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast, where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This episode we have Netflix 233rd film from 2020. It's the Brazilian rom-com Rich in Love, or in Portuguese Ricos de Amor. It's directed by Bruno Garodi, and it stars Danilo Mesqueda, Giovanna Lancelotti, and Fernanda Paez Lemay. I'm Jesse. I think I did okay with those names. I hope I did, but I'm here to tick off another Netflix original film from the list of uh, Netflix original films that we're seeing through 2020. As always, if uh, you're keen on checking out Rich in Love, give us a pause, come back a bit later on, because I'm going to spoil it at various stages and, and give my thoughts on this film. We do kick off the show with the fast flicks with a quick little summary of what the film is all about. So for me, this one is about a rich boy who's given an ultimatum by his dad to grow up or be cut off, but he gets sidetracked by a girl along the way. <laughs> Intriguing. Sounds like every rom-com movie we've ever seen before. Is this any different? We'll find out very soon. Uh, but before we do, like this is there's not much to find out about this film. Uh, it was originally set to be released in theaters domestically um, in Brazil, but because of the coronavirus pandemic, um, they cancelled it and Netflix got it out there. Uh, the working title for this one was "Shall We or Dance," which is interesting. But across the world, it had some different translations. So I, the, obviously the idea of rich in love, but in Armenia, it was called Shall We or Dance. So that went with that working title. In Finnish, it was Love and Wealth. In Greece, it was What If I Wasn't Rich? No question mark, but like we get where they're going. In Hungarian, it's called Love in, Incognito. In Japan, If I Fall in Love with the Rich. In Poland and Russia, it's called Rich Man in Love. And in Vietnam, it's called, my favorite, Young Master Fake Poverty. <laughs> a good bunch of uh, titles there. This one hit, hit Netflix on the 30th of April, 2020. As mentioned, it's a Brazilian film. It was filmed in and around Rio de Janeiro from the 4th of July, 2019 until the 13th of August, 2019. What are the critics and audiences saying about this one? So, Rotten Tomatoes. There's no consensus. There's only four reviews. They are all rotten. The audience has it at 50% on less than 50 reviews. And then we look at IMDb and Letterboxd. IMDb, it sits at a solid 6.1 out of 10. It's on a bit under 3,000 ratings. On Letterboxd, it's on nearly 5,000 ratings, and it sits on a solid 3.1 out of 5, and that has actually been logged by over 7,000 people. So fairly solid there from IMDb and Letterboxd. What are my early thoughts for this one? I, this isn't the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's close to it. <laughs> <laughs> with a very saucy opening, haha. <laughs> um, <laughs> the idea of rich in love, this movie is about a, a family of tomato makers. So um, I'm gonna make a few puns throughout, I think. Uh, <laughs> like the title um, is rich in love and it doesn't come close to dealing with the idea of loving someone, not for their riches. Like the reveal sort of left for the last 15 minutes, which doesn't give it enough time to do anything meaningful. Stay with me and I'll catch you up on everything you need to know. <laughs> How good am I? <laughs> Let's talk about some characters inside. Um, Tito. Tito, or the Tato, is uh, the main character in this one. He is the son of a wealthy tomato mogul, which I sort of mentioned. He loves to sleep around and use his wealth. Uh, and in doing so, he decides to switch identities with his best friend to sort of see what people really think about him. Think about him without his money and to try and get out of his father's shadows. Falls in love with a girl, and this is like his moment to change, uh, to move to Rio, and you know he pretends to be a janitor so this girl will like him, and you know tries to better himself, I guess, in that sort of generic storyline that you'd often hear. Uh, and this girl that he falls for was Paula, and she's the complete opposite to him. She's independent, she's determined, she's a medical student, she wants to be helpful and do the right thing, um, and you know like she's working hard to be successful, but you know working in the medical field, she's constantly hit on by this doctor, which which is weird, and. He seems like her only way up, and I'm not sure like this was really needed as a character trait or something that she had to face, um, because you know we just have her sort of we see her being successful for the work that she actually does. So why do we need to see someone else sort of create more conditions for her that we don't need to see? We just want to see her as successful, and you know obviously she falls for Tito as well, and you know does she only fall for him because he when she meets him he's lying and he says he's poor. And we've mentioned before, she wants to do better for the world. So is that why she sort of falls with him? I don't know. It's all, I'm all confused about this film. Um, the only other characters I, I mentioned before, Tito's best friend, his name's um, Igor, or Igor. And he works for Tito's dad as the groundskeeper at the tomato business. And, uh, you know, he often forgets, um, you know, what he needs to do because it's sad that his best friend, is meant to be his best friend, doesn't look out for him. 
And, um, you know, he's pretty much there for Tito to get what he wants, which is very sad. Um, <laughs> the only other characters there, I guess, is this character, Alana, who is the coordinator at this tomato school that Igor and um, Tito go to, and they, they switch roles. And, you know, she's 100% a predator, uh, kind of gross. And then the other character, Monique, who used to work for Tito's father, really hardworking, got fired, realistically, so Tito could take over, which is a bit sad. And and she sort of sits there to support Tito throughout and isn't, you know, doesn't knock him back when he wants her help, which is an interesting sort of concept too. Uh, the director for this one, Bruno Garodi. He's got eight directing credits, all in Portuguese, including the 2021 Netflix original too, which is called Confessions of an Invisible Girl. So I'm sure we'll get to that at some stage. And apparently... He's also directing the sequel to this film. This film's getting a sequel. Big news. <laughs> I'm so excited for it. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm not a big fan of this film. And we're going to talk about the scenes. Uh, I've only got one thing that stood out for me, and I think it's because it was relatable more than anything else. There's a scene where Tito is trying to work out how to use a photocopier. That just felt relatable. Photocopiers are a pain. Um, but apart from that, everything else is laughable and not the stuff that I enjoyed. So let, let's go through this huge list. The first time we meet Tito, he wakes up, in bed with a girl whose name he doesn't even know. And then he goes down to breakfast and his family's maids there getting him breakfast and he sort of tells her to clean up the mess. Gross, gross. That's our first moment with this character that we're gonna follow through this film and want him to do well. Just gross. Um, I mentioned before the doctor, um, I think his name was Victor. He was like all creepy towards Paula throughout. And there's one like right at the start, he sort of like holds her head in the workplace in a weird way. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> then we, we see Tito and you know it's his birthday coming up and his dad's going to get him a car so Tito and his mate Igor they're racing around in this new car they're going doing circles around this bus that uh, Paula and her friends are on and the cops pull him over for speeding and the male cop sort of you know gets out of the car and sort of just says you know here's a warning just be careful and then this chick this female cop gets out she told, tells him put your hands on your head sort of puts him on the bonnet grabs his ass and then feels him up Gross, and then she wants an invite to his birthday party. Just so weird, so weird. It just sort of shows this playboy style this guy has. He's like slept with every single woman in this town. Monique, um, this is the, the chick that works for Tito's dad and you know, the dad sort of gets Monique to to work to walk Tito around the workplace and you know, she's very blunt with him. Like, I don't, I'm not a babysitter sort of thing. And his response was like, you know, are you shitty because I hooked up with you and didn't call you back? Oh, just all these lines and, and moments just gross for a character that they want you to try and try and get get along with or like I think uh, the birthday thing that I mentioned before it's this lead up to this birthday party Tito's big birthday party where it's like this big rave music party that turns into like a line dancing party and a big tomato fight super weird and <laughs> Especially, and then Paula, that's where Paula and, and Tito sort of have their, their meet cute because <laughs> he throws a tomato at her. Um, and then, she, you know, her, her worry is that they waste so many tomatoes because there's so many hungry people that could be fed from them. Just not not good. Uh, there's a shot where Tito just wakes up in bed at some stage by himself and he just has this disappointed look. It was like, what a loser. Like, are you that used to having company every single night? Just gross. Uh, there's this sort of split... Uh, dance lessons between Monique and Tito and him actually dancing with Paula. Weird. I mentioned Alana before. She's almost a predator. Um, she goes back to the house with Igor thinking that it's Tito and she's flirting. She's getting naked, seduces him. Gross. And then the next morning goes at it again while Tito's actually under the bed. Just sort of felt real predatory. Um, <laughs> this is probably the funniest moment in this film. Tito and Paula. Um, they're, they're in this cab trying to, and they're in a rush, it's raining. Monique sort of called them and said her sister's in trouble. And this cab drives like, I can't drive you any further, you've got to get out. So they get out and then out of nowhere, Tito comes in on a horse in the middle of the rain just to ride a horse the rest of the way. Hilarious. Um, later, at the, towards the end of the film, there's this Tito, uh, you know, he's sort of on the beach trying to impress Paula, gets a guitar, sings, everyone on the beach joins in and then he walks on the campfire and catches on fire. <laughs> lame uh, and then Tito's redemptive moment it's like he's growing up he's changing and the moment to show this on the screen was him putting washing out on the line doing the laundry so crap <laughs> and finally last thing uh, we get this flash forward like a year later at the end of the film and <laughs> Alana and Igor uh, even before the flashback we sort of see that you know she's happy to stick with Igor even though it's not Tito and then we find out a year later that they're actually married like what the hell <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Just such a, a bunch of uh, random stuff in this film. Some themes, some ideas. What was this trying to say? I think, you know, the idea that lying can get you the truth if you lie 
or like pretend you're someone else people might actually tell you what they think um but in in the same way like the idea you've got to grow up you got to start at the bottom chase your dreams because that that carefree easy life of the rich where you take things for granted and not doing that hard work um it's the idea of having to earn it you need to earn it and i, I get that idea through this film it just wasn't done very well at all uh, what did i take away from this one? i thought this one was interesting this is um a guy online called pablo b he had this to say in a very negative critique of the film, which I thought was quite interesting. He said, social networks give the right to speak to legions of idiots who first talked only in the bar after a glass of wine without harming the community. They were quickly silenced and now have the same right to speak as a Nobel Prize winner. Winner. <laughs> it is the invasion of the bitter film critic or the left for not having the courage to promote values like certain courageous film directors like this film film directors like this film so he's obviously thinks this film's fantastic and he's sick of everyone putting it down because he thinks it's a really good film <laughs> i've got a message for pablo if you're listening to this um please reach out and let me know why you love this film so much give me give me one good reason because i need to know i need to know why people connected this film because a lot of people did obviously um and we see that in the letterbox and imdb scores uh, the only question upon it like the question of pondering for this is, is tito's transformation is it believable like the, the idea of him helping Monique's sister and son, is that just so, you know, she'll help him to, to win over this girl? Like, I don't know. I, I, and I'm probably going to use the same sort of question anyway because I think it's a little bit of an interesting thing to think about that the whole film is about his redemptive arc and it's not really that big. Sort of the last 10 minutes is all we really see. But I'm going to wrap this up. Give the film a rating out of five. What am I going to go for this one? I think, uh, you know, the fact that this sits on a 3.1 out of 5 on Letterboxd make me think that there's probably a, a lot of creepy dudes in Brazil probably loving this film because of the attractiveness of Giovanna uh, Lancelotti, who plays um, our friend, not Alana, <laughs> what was her name? I forgot her name. Paula. Paula. He play, uh, she plays Paula. And I, I can't see what else is appealing about this film. I mean, this is as rotten as any tomato you will ever see. I'm giving this a 1 out of 5. We have socials. We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Give us a follow. Give us a like if you can. I'm going to stick with that idea. Social media question this week. Is Tito a better person at the end of the film? I don't think he was. I think he was still rich. Like his dad's still investing in him in this new company that he set up. So he didn't actually build it himself from the bottom. Uh, lame. We're back next week. Next week, we've got another film from 2020. It's a drama. It's called All Day and a Night, which is directed by Joe Robert Cole. It stars Ashton Sanders, Jeffrey Wright, Regina Taylor, and Yahya abdul the II. Keen. Keen to check that one out. Looking forward to it. Thank you, as always, for your company, and I hope to see you next week.